Okay, fourth year. I'm just going to give you a revision lesson on the Scottish Music Unit because Mr Henderson is uh, not in today. So as you can see here, I have got the one of the websites that I show you with Scottish Music as a title. And what I'm going to do is just going to revise everything to do with Scottish Music. First of all, we have instruments that are present. So one that some people actually find difficult to hear, the accordion, because it's not an instrument that you hear live much anymore. So I'll click on that one first. And as you can see, there's a picture of the accordion. And as long as you're aware of the sound of an accordion, which you should be because no doubt you've done this by now. Okay, and that one's telling you all about the accordion. And this one should tell you how the accordion sounds. Okay. Now, obviously that's not Scottish music, but it gives you the sound of an accordion. Some people think it produces what's called a reedy sound, the sound of a reed sound because of the way in which it makes the, it makes the sound. That video tells you about it. And there's the accordion. So let's go back. Uh, this one here is very self-explanatory. Sometimes you see here an acoustic guitar. Normally in Scottish music, you would hear an acoustic guitar being strummed rather than play the tune. You tend to find that the accordion or the fiddle play the tune in Scottish music. Okay, so the, the acoustic guitar is used more as an accompaniment instrument, someone strumming an acoustic guitar. This one needs no introduction. We all know what the sound of the bagpipes sound like. That's what's called a pipe band. This window's not available, but I really don't need to play much of that. We all know what bagpipes sound like. Okay, there we go, bagpipes. And that's also got something called a snare drum as well. That's another one of your concepts, snare drum. Okay, and finally, fiddle. And what a lot of people don't quite understand is that the fiddle is exactly the same as the violin. There is no difference. In fact, in your exam, if you were, were played Scottish music and the question said, listen to this piece of music and identify the instrument playing the melody, and because you're listening to Scottish music, the answer that you may be looking for is fiddle. But if you wrote as your answer a violin, it would still be acceptable. Okay, so you would use that. You wouldn't, for example, if you're listening to a piece of classical music or something else, you wouldn't tend to use the word fiddle. You, sorry, I beg your pardon. But yeah, yeah, you wouldn't tend to use the word fiddle if you were listening to classical music. You would tend to use the word violin. But if you're listening to Scottish music, Celtic music, Irish music, etc., it sounds like this. Yep, acoustic guitar. That's a fiddle. So I didn't actually know this example was coming up because if you remember I said that the guitar was normally used as an accompanying instrument. Well, Mr. Johnson was proved correct because in this example it's getting used as an accompanying instrument and the fiddle is playing the tune. Okay. Yeah, that's very nice. Okay, so that's step one, very straightforward, very easy. There is another instrument that's sometimes used, and it might not be a concept anymore, and it's called Clarsach, which is a small harp, the Clarsach. So you will just need to remember that what you can actually do at the end of this video, you'll have time at the end of this video to go back over a few things, is maybe just look under the uh, C when you get back to the main page and under the uh, all the, the alphabetical list of definitions and find one beginning with a C called Clarsach. It's dead easy to it's dead easy to hear. It's just a small harp. It, again, it's not quite the same as the orchestral harp, which is a bigger instrument. It's a smaller version. In fact, it's the harp that you sometimes see as the symbol of a pint of Guinness. Uh, not that Mr. Johnson knows what that is, uh, but uh, you probably remember a pint of Guinness. If you can remember a pint of Guinness, you actually see a small harp. Okay, so we're now moving on to styles. And for National Three styles, these are actually also sometimes called Scottish dances. Mat, reel and waltz. Okay, the one that I always start with whenever I'm teaching Scottish music is the waltz because it's the easiest dance to identify. Usually quite slow, three beats in the bar, you can dance one, two, three, one, two, three. In fact, many tunes you play actually the waltz. There's one in the, the Red Book, a tune percussion called Highland Waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
One, two, three, flat one. Okay, the waltz is not actually a, uh, solely a Scottish dance. There are a number of waltzes, the very famous waltz from uh, Austria, Germany, called the Blue Danube. Oh, world court. That's it. Okay, I don't have any music in front of me. Uh, in actual fact, probably the most famous Scottish waltz is Flower of Scotland, our national anthem. So that's what you'll hear in these two examples. This person is probably going to be going one, two, three, one, two, three with the accompaniment part of the accordion and no doubt play the tune. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, 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 yeah. And of course these people will be dancing probably something called the Pride of Erin Walks. In fact, this is actually called the Lowland Walks. Uh, let's see this one. Oh, here we go. It feels like Hugmany, New Year, Hugmany time. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, dead easy, right? That one's dead easy. So that's the waltz. Okay, right. Now I'm not actually going to do reel just now because I want to do reel along with jig. Where is jig? It should be here. So I'll come back to do reel and jig together. Okay, because both of these dances are very fast. This dance here, a march, is sometimes danced and it's also sometimes, guess what, march too. So no doubt when I click on here to make sure you have a couple of examples, one with people dancing and one with people marching. Will they? Will they, Mr. Johnson? No, it's just people marching. So here is the march. Right, okay, so that's one way in which in an exam they will play you a match, it will sound very similar to that, okay? Okay. One of the ways you can identify a match is to listen out for the snare drum. The snare drum will continually play roles in what I call, just to make it easy for everyone, a rumpity tumpity rhythms. Not very technical, but it does make sense. That's a match. Now the key thing to remember, not remember, but the key thing to understand is that matches will not always sound like that. They will sometimes be played by a Kaylee band, but you still need to know you're listening for a match. How do you do that? You just listen for the... The march is one of the two dances in Scottish music that I sometimes call a bouncy dance. The reel and the jig, they're not. They're flowing dances. Right, so the march and another dance called the Strathspey that we're going to get to later are very jaggy, bouncy. They're not flowing fast notes. The notes tend to be bouncy. The march is quite a fast version of that, and when you hear the Strathspey, it's a bit slower. So there's the march. Okay. Right, I said I'll come back to the reel, and that's done. Groups for National 3, this is all dead easy. Folk groups, very straightforward. Groups that use acoustic instruments, sometimes bagpipes, fiddles, etc, etc. A folk group. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right, and there was one called Celtic Rock, that just says Scottish Dance Band. So there's, the, there's another one maybe to look at at the end, Celtic Rock. In fact, let me go on this website, let me go to Concept List. First of all, let's just see if the Clarsach is there, there it's there. The Small Harp, there it's there, like the Guinness sign that Mr Johnson knows nothing about. So we can have a listen to that. A small Scottish harp. There you go. Okay, so you now will know what a class tag sounds like. Again, you can maybe go back and listen to more of that if you want. Okay. And the other one was Celtic Rock. But sometimes they keep changing these concepts year in, year out. Oh, there it's there. Celtic Rock. 
a style that mixes Celtic folk music and rock. So it's very similar to that example there that you just heard of the, the Scottish folk, the folk group. Was it this one I played? It was this one. But it's more electronic and rocky. Oh, that is actually quite, that, that, that particular example there is actually quite up-tempo, right? But it's not Celtic rock because it doesn't have electric instruments. Yeah. All right, so that that's possibly not the best example of a folk group, that one there, because that's very similar to Celtic rock. So again, maybe do some more research. You can go on YouTube and type in folk groups. It's, it's the type of thing, if you go to a Cayley, that you hear, a folk group. Yeah, it's a very famous Christmas song that uses a folk group called The Fairy Tale of New York. That, that's a folk group, it's an Irish folk group, but it's a good example of what a folk group sounds like. Whereas Celtic rock is a bit more up-tempo, a lot more driving rhythms, and as I say, electronic instruments. And there's a bass guitar in there, and a, and a, real, and a fully fledged drum kit. Yeah. Okay. Right, Mr Johnson is now lost. No, I'm not. I'm here. Right, folk group, Scottish dance band. You, you'll never be asked a question in an exam, eh, is this a Scottish dance band or is it a folk group? You would never ever be asked that, they're, they're both exactly the same. So as long as you know what a Scottish dance band sounds like, it just sounds like a folk group. You'd never be asked the two in the same question, okay? The only thing I'd say about that is, again, they're, they're quite rocky. They're, they're, uh, sometimes you hear a, a Scottish dance band where it's just a snare drum going do, 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 It's a bit more traditional than that. But nowadays you tend to find that most folk groups, if you hire a band, for example, for a wedding to play a Cayley, they'll probably sound like that. Right, they tend to use a, use a kind of a full drum kit now, rather than just what they used to use, is just a snare drum. Okay, so that's a folk group. But again, it's not a million miles away from that example. Okay. See how that person's, for example, doing a fill in there on the drum kit, and they're playing a beat on the, on, the, on a, some sort of symbol there. Just round the corner from the symbol, a, a traditional Scottish folk group would sound exactly the same as that, but the only difference would be that they wouldn't include that driving drum beat, it'd be more just a snare drum beat, that, that type of thing. But anyway, it doesn't really matter, as long as you know the sound of that, you'll know what a Scottish dance band sounds like. You'll not get mixed up, I mean, you'll not get mixed up between a Scottish dance band, for example, and a jazz band, or a rock band, you'll know the sound of it. Okay, right, that one's done. Instruments. Yeah, well, instruments, for example, drone, that's not really an instrument, that's actually part of a bagpipe. The drone, oh, it's unavailable. That's the bit of the bagpipes that go, the, bit, the bits you see at the top. Normally, a, a traditional set of bagpipes has three drones at the top, and those are the ones that start off the music before the bagpipe player will play the tune. And then the tune will start. The tune is actually played when the notes are played by the chanter. Okay? And finally, the snare drum. You'll know what a snare drum sounds like. There's one there. But you, you all know what that sounds like. There are people in your class, in fact, in the classroom you're in just now has a snare drum. Right? Very straightforward. The snare drum. Sometimes it's called the side drum. That's not a snare drum. That's not a good example. And the far edge. Oh, hurry up. Play the example. Come on. Your oh, hurry up. It's all about... Oh, that's a drum pad. There's some of them. Some of you in this class like a drum pad. Right, I've not heard a snare drum yet. Let's hope this example's got a snare drum. It has! There you go, the snare drum. Oh, he's good. Not as good as me, but he is good. It's a joke. He is, he is all the best than me. Right, okay, so early on I said I'm going to talk about the difference between a reel and a jig. Right, first of all, they are both fast dances. If you're at a Cayley, those are the ones where you'd be going round and round in a circle, or you'd be going <coughs> fast dances. So how do you tell the difference between a reel and a jig? Right, it's all down to how the fast notes are played. If you notice here, the word reel has got four letters that make up the word reel, and that's a clue. Jig has got three. 
So the fast notes in a reel move along in fours. Digga digga. One, two, three, four. Right? Something, for example, like this. Da 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 da. And one of the ways in which you can remember that or, or, or help you with that is to say Edinburgh. One, two, three, four. Edinburgh. Edinburgh has got four syllables. So if you hear a dance and you can say Edinburgh as you're listening to the music and it matches some of the music, the answer is real. Okay, so let's see if Mr. Johnson's correct. So I'm going to play this real. And I'm going to say Edinburgh, 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 and it should match the music. Let's see if it does. If it doesn't, I'm not going to look very good, am I? Let's hear. Hurry up. That's the introduction. Not the best example so far, folks. Edinburgh, 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 Edinburgh. Stop. I'm going to stop that girl there because the, the last phrase that she played there went digga 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 da 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 digga 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 da 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 So the fast notes went 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 Edinburgh, Edinburgh, da 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 Edinburgh, Edinburgh, da 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 Edinburgh, 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 Edinburgh That's how you know it is a real because the fast notes you can match the word Edinburgh to the fast notes Edinburgh, 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 Edinburgh. Right, let's see if this accord, that's not the best example, it's a bit too fancy, that example. Let's see if this one's better. It's still okay by the way, but it's a bit fancy though. Okay, oh. Stop, absolutely perfect. That man's hand is going digga 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 digga. The fingers are going Edinburgh Edinburgh as he's playing the music, right? Edinburgh 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 Edinburgh. Edinburgh, 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 Edinburgh. Jig, right? You say strawberry, strawberry. One, two, three, one, two, three. The fast notes come along in groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Jiggery, jiggery. Now, an old colleague of mine, a man called Mr. Dignall, who I worked beside in Coatlands High School for years and years and years. If you know anyone at Coatlands High School, mums, dads, whatever, big, big brothers, big, big sisters, they'll know Mr. Dignall. He used to get his classes to say jiggery, jiggery. One, anything that goes one, two, three, one, two, three. In the past, I've also done Nelly the Elephant. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Jiggery, jiggery. I tend to use strawberry, strawberry. It's just something that I've used for years. Strawberry, strawberry. Let's see if I'm right. This person should play fast notes that are in groups of three. So you should say strawberry, strawberry. <laughs> Stop. Strawberry, strawberry. Now I'll keep playing it. I know I might annoy some people I've stopped too quickly, but I had to do that because hopefully you can hear strawberry, 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 jiggery, jiggery, nearly the elephant, nearly the elephant, nearly the elephant. Anything that goes one, two, three, one, two, three will do. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I could actually hear Nelly the Elephant in that tune. Nelly the Elephant did do, 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 and that's how you know it's a bit. Jiggery, 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 jiggery. Take it, take it, take 
Gigagig gig, and nearly the elephant. And that's how you know the difference between a reel and the jig. Right? The last one is the Strath Spee. Where's the Strath Spee? There it's there. A bit slower, right? And the Strath Spee contains, once again, like the march, it's not a flowing dance. But unlike the march, it's quite up tempo, quite quite fast. And it's not, a march isn't fast. It can't be fast because you march to it. But it's not, it's got some kind of a tempo beat. Da, 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 but the, but the rhythms in a march are quite jaggy, bouncy, so is a Strathspey, but they're slower. Right, so you can hear there, the person is going the Strath Spee bouncy dance, but not as up tempo as a march. Uh, and it also contains something, a really famous Scottish rhythm called the Scotch Snap. Dum, dum, dum. So if I was to play, for example, a Strath Spee, it would sound something like this. Every time you hear that rhythm, dum dum, that's known as a Scotch snap. Dum dum. Now the Scotch snap can appear in other Scottish dances. I can play a waltz with a Scotch snap. Yeah, but that is not a Strathspey. It's a waltz. Just because there are two little Scotch snaps in the music does not mean that it is a strat speed. It's still a waltz because 99% of the music is going one, two, three. The strat speed has got two steady beats in the bar, right, and it contains lots of bouncy notes, including the Scotch snap. Strathspey you will ever hear in your life. I just made it up at the piano, okay? But the key thing is, I went bouncy, 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 and that's how you know you're listening to a Strathspey. Okay, a bouncy dance. There you go, and that's all the dances covered. Incidentally, I noticed one other concept when we're talking about jig. Compound time. Right, a jig is in compound time where the, the notes are divided into threes. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. But the reason I didn't spend too much time on that is compound time does not have to be a jig. Yes, a jig is in compound time, but compound time can also be, for example, that sh uh, a song called Hallelujah that you might know from the very first Shrek film. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, strawberry, strawberry, right? That's compound time. Somebody to love by Queen. Can anybody find me? Somebody to, one, two, three, and the piano part goes up, that's one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. In fact, the drummers in the class will probably play a compound time beat. Maybe we are the champions. We are the champions. One, two, three, one, two, three. So a jig is in compound time, but lots of other tunes are also in compound time. So just because something's compound time doesn't mean it is a jig. Okay. Uh, pentatonic scale, this one here, pentatonic scale, that just means you might be asked a question. The question says, which scale is present in the music? If you hear anything that sounds Scottish -y or Celtic, -y, that's the answer you're looking for. A five note scale. One, two, three, four, five. That's why it's called a pentatonic scale. So for example, you, you should know by now that if something a major scale, it'll sound happy. Yeah, that should be a major scale. There's a major scale. Da -da 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 -da. And happy birthday, happy tunes uses a, a, a major scale. If a tune is dark or sinister, it 
uses a minor scale. Dad and Sinister, it uses a minor scale. So how do you know if the answer is pentatonic scale? It will sound Celtic. One, two, three, four, five. A five note scale. Right, so if you ever asked a question about the type of scale being used and the music is Celtic, Scottish and pentatonic, is there to tick? Right, I would tick pentatonic. What do they say about it in this example? Just a matter of interest. Yeah, old Lang Syne, pentatonic scale. Yeah, yeah, you should know that should. In fact, that's actually there as well. That's it there. Da, da, da. Etc. Et okay, that's that done, and I'm not sure if they actually ask vamp anymore. I think vamp has been taken out. Vamp is this the type of thing that a piano would do in Scottish music. Da, 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 da. That's vamp. But I'm pretty sure that's been taken out of the course now. In fact, you can maybe check that by doing this. Look and see if it's still there. Let's see if it's still there. It is, oh it's still there, so I think they possibly do still ask that, okay, here's the bam, that's me playing tune, oh, oh, that's obviously not Scott and the Brave, this is playing me, see what I did at the start there, I played my piano, Scott and the Brave, so I, okay, that's a bam, and there we go, oh, that's not what I want, I want this page. Right, a couple more instrument instruments, and then finally, all we need to do to sum up everything is talk about anything to do with the voice. All of these ones down here have something in common. They're all to do with using the voice. So we'll come to them in a minute. Okay, here's a nice interesting instrument called a boran. Right, it's like a, it's like a sideways drum. Yeah. Oh, that's quite loud. That's not loud. Okay, let's see if we can hear the boran along with other music. No, no, no. Yeah, other music, yeah, there you go. And that's actually a jig. Dig it, did the strawberry, strawberry. So quite often you'll hear a boran in, a, in an exam. It won't be on its own, so they won't play you that. Right, they won't play you that. Okay, it'll sound something more like that. Okay, you actually get it at the start of Bal and Mori. What's the story? Okay, that's that one. Back. Right. Oh, there's Clarsac there. Right, remember I talked about Clarsac and I wasn't sure why it wasn't there because I missed it. Okay. There you go. And sometimes, by the way, you don't just hear a classic on its own. Somebody may actually be singing along to a classic. So while we're on that topic, let's finally introduce the ones that use the voice. Okay? Right, here we go. Very straightforward. Use the voice. Okay, are we covering them all? I think so. Right, here we go. Right, right. This one here, Bothy Ballad. Bothy Ballad work was, was sung by men who worked in farms. And it was songs that they would sing at night time about their work. Men who worked in farms, that was what's what called a bothy, the, the, the place that you stayed if you worked on a farm. I'm not talking about the man that owned the farm, the farmer. He would stay in a big house somewhere. These are people that would stay, nowadays they would probably stay in a caravan, right? And they would go out in the morning and, and do the work for the farmer, but in those days it was called a bothy, and they sang songs at night time about their work. Hey, my friend, I sent me to the farm to work God pay for the farmer's money, we'll hide my bra, that type of thing it'll sound like, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Now the reason I fast forwarded it is because he actually started off singing something that sounds a little bit like mouth music. Right? Mouth music that we'll come to in a minute can be sung by a man or a lady, usually a lady, right? but it's nonsense words because it's meant to be music that sounds like for dancing to when they didn't have instruments. 
Right? It's just nonsense words, so I couldn't understand anything he was saying at the start. So it didn't actually sound like a Bothy ballad. I was like, is that mouth music? But I now know it's a Bothy ballad because I can understand some of the words. I can make out something in a very thick Scottish accent, but I can make it out. Right, that's the bit I don't like. I like the one that sings words. Oh, never mind. Anyway, you get the idea. You'll understand some of the words. They're about work, etc. It sounds a bit like that. By the way, you might get more than one man. Right. Walking song is the one sung by ladies when you hear tapping of the cloth. The tapping of the cloth, beating of the cloth. <laughs> Ladies, and you hear that beating of the cloth. Often you can't understand what they're singing about because they're singing in Gaelic. Gaelic psalm is quite a strange one. It's one that's like a form of hymn singing in the Western Isles or the Highlands of Scotland. They sing in Gaelic. So it starts off with someone singing the song, or sorry, singing the psalm, the hymn tune, and then the congregation usually join in. But how oh, come on, hurry up. We're here together to praise God. Praise God. Here we go. It sounds very similar. Right, normally it starts off with the, 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 I think it's actually called the presenter, who actually starts off singing a verse and then everyone joins in as you can hear. Okay, that was quite a good example actually. Uh, is mouth music here? Let's just go through to this one here and see if we can find mouth music. I, I really need to learn the alphabet actually. Right, mouth music. So this will sound like unaccompanied songs with Gaelic or nonsense words. Right, normally sung for Kaylee dances. So in other words, if there's no instruments available, they would sing for dancing to. Okay. So you can hear how that's maybe sung in Gaelic, but it did not sound like the Gaelic Sam. Right? Which sounded really haunting. You would never want to dance to a Gaelic Sam. Okay? Just so you can tell the difference here is the difference here. I told you, do you need to learn the alphabet? Here we go, Gaelic Sam. That's the presenter. Everyone's joining in. There you go. Okay. Uh, and that was mouth music. The other one uh, was a uh, Scots ballad, which is just a, basically a normal Scottish song. In fact, Flower of Scotland is a Scots ballad. Oh, Flower of Scotland. Okay, a slow Scottish song which tells a story. Three gypsies came to our hall door And of that they sang very They sang so sweet Now you can hear there how that person is singing in English. You can understand her words. Right, it's not like a bothy ballad that sounds like a man, my feet should be to the film. In fact, sometimes a Scots ballad has actually got an, an instrument as an accompaniment, for example, the classic, etc, etc. Okay, and that is it, folks. I think that's everything covered. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, now what you can do for the rest of the period is you can actually look at, we're going to be going to... Uh, Pop music, I think you may have already started a bit of that. So for the rest of the period you can go to the Court Lights High School website, Music and Drama section, and if you scroll down to uh, your work, National 4 Music Work for all National 4 pupils, that's what I have just revised today, right, and now my class are going on from this to Scottish popular music, so there's a sway presentation there. Just in case you have done this one and you're struggling for something else to do today, you can try the classical music section, which is your next unit. But that's the document you go through today. And hopefully Mr Henderson will be back tomorrow. 
Thank you very much.